Hi there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable Ruth Bader Ginsburg ornaments. Um, this one's been modified to fit a slightly smaller top of my ornament. So the one we're making today is going to look a little bit more like this to fit a larger topped ornament. The nice thing about clear ornaments is you can actually fill them with acrylic paint um, about here and swirl it around to paint the inside black. So unless you have black ornaments already or can find them, um, I'll highly suggest doing that. This is a medium sized ornament. Um, the pattern is a little bit tricky to adapt depending on the top of the ornament. So um, if you've got some options, you might have to make the topper and then find the one that fits best. Um, I did buy, again, the black ornaments on Amazon and they were these super teeny tiny things which were actually really hard to make proportionate to what we're building here today. So this is a vertical netting pattern we're gonna start with a ring around the top and we're gonna just sew up and down to make all of these beautiful diamonds. And when we're finished, we'll join it together and be done with our topper. Um, so let's talk about what else you'll need. In addition to an ornament, this one's glass. I've got some plastic ones, but the top's a little bit bigger. If you, one other tip, if you find that your ornament topper is a little bit snug, you can usually pop these things off and it usually fits better over this. Like this one won't fit on top of the silver piece, but it'll fit nicely over here and then I can cap it off. Um, also one other thing you can do is when you're finished you can use some E6000 or craft glue, just like super glue, to um, adhere this to the top of your ornament so that it stays attached, but that's that. Um, if you do a smaller topped ornament you might need to glue this down so it doesn't slide all over the place, um, but let's begin. So I'm going to set this aside. Alright, so in addition to that you're going to need some Japanese made preferably white seed beads. These are Toho's and you want to get the ones that are size 11 slash 0. Of course it's not on this package. You can get them online. You can get them um, at your local craft store. Don't get the ones made in China, the cheapest ones. Splurge a little bit because you'll have a better beading experience if they're all the same size. So these are all 11 slash 0 seed beads. These are the opaque white. Um, the one I showed was made in a matte finished white. And uh, so whichever you prefer. So you'll need about a tube of them. So at least seven and a half grams um, of the white uh, 11 O seed beads. Czech is also an okay brand. Mayuki is great, um, but Toho is the one I prefer. They're nice and round. You'll want to get a beading needle. Um, I got a little package here of size 12, size 12 beading needles from Beadsmith. Um, these are made in England. The ones made in England typically are better quality um, than other places. And the nice thing about these is they're nice and flexible. I think a size 10 beading needle will also work, but I just use 12s. Um, and then you'll need some thread. I'm using some cheap whatever polyester thread that I got, a big spool of it on Amazon. Um, I would not recommend cotton thread as it might break when you pull on it. So to do a quick test, I just tug really hard on my thread to make sure it's not going to break when I pull on it. Cotton thread I can rip very easily. Um, if you are a beater and you want to use Fireline, that's okay. There's not a ton of drape in this project. It's not necessary. So if you've got a nice nylon or polyester th beading thread, that works too. Um, so I've got white thread on my needle already. I've got my beads ready to go. And um, I've got some snips nearby just in case I need to change out the thread. So um, I've got a really long tail on my needle for thread management, but whatever. So for today we are going to start with 42 beads. We're going to make the circle around the top. Um, depending on the size of your ornament, if you want to check it if you're fitting something perfectly, you can go as small as 36 beads and I would say probably no more than 44 beads. At that point the pattern starts to drape a little funny. So, um, so I'm going to pick up 42 seed beads around. nine, 10. And because I don't like having to count more than once, I, well, not wanting to double check everything. I double check that I've got the number I said. So I've got 10 and I just slide them off my needle and I pick up another 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I'm at twenty now. 
I have 40 right now, so I'm going to do 42. All right, so I've got all of my beads here, and I'm going to slide them down. And when I slide my beads down in general, you'll see me park my needle into my bead mat, which is sort of a nice to have, and pull my thread through. So I'm tugging on the thread, not where it connects through the needle, which can kind of weaken the thread. Sometimes it can start tearing it up, especially if you're using cheaper needles, they end up being a little bit rough. So what I'm going to do before I tie my knot off, um, I can tie a very simple knot that I can undo and then just sort of hold it carefully. And I'm going to pull out my ornament again and see how it fits. So the ornament I was showing that I was working with is my glass ornament, which again is a little smaller, but the ring I'm starting with is a little bit bigger. So it's a little roomy, which I'm okay with. This one actually might fit over the silver cap. So if this were tightened all the way, it should still fit nicely over that silver cap. Um, the other thing that I want to check, because I did have another ornament I had planned to use for this, but it had a much, oops, not that one, had a much bigger top, are these plastic ornaments that I got um, from Amazon. I got a big batch of these, so I'm just going to slip it on and um, try and tighten it without actually tying the knot. And of course all my beads slide everywhere just to get a sense that if this were the ornament I were using is this enough beads and I think without the silver thing let me get it on camera my thread kind of bounced all over my beads are sliding off now but I think without the silver thing it'll fit it'll still be snug so again apologies I'm kind of trying to work with what fits and what makes the best shape um, so if you have to go up to 44 beads that works um, after that, if you get any bigger or smaller than 30, what did I say, 36 to 44 beads to start, um, there is a different part of the pattern that has to be adjusted. So we're going to go for it, and then at the very end, I will give you some tips about if, how to make some adjustments to the pattern so it fits well. Um, all right, so I've got my beads where they're supposed to be. So I've tied one knot, um, just a simple whatever knot, and now I'm going to do a surgeon's knot, which is take your thread and go over once and through and pull it through a second time. So the thread is spiraled around twice here and very slowly and gently to make sure the beads stay where they're supposed to tighten that up. And again, because my thread is nice and sturdy, I can tighten it up well. And now I've got my starting ring. Um, it's not foolproof. It's, it could technically come out if you weren't careful. And again, I, at this point, just to be sure I'm not totally blowing it, I'm going to go ahead, slip it over my ornament just to make sure that it's going to fit. And it's pretty durable, but it's not quite fitting over the silver thing, which is fine. I'm going to pop that thing off, untangle myself from my thread. Dear. There we go. And voila. So it does fit here. So it fits nicely right over the top of that. It'll be nice and snug. Again, I wanted it to sit at the top and I didn't want it sliding around um, on a glass ornament, which is smaller. It'll go right over the silver thing. So that's why I'm gonna go with this size. I think it's a good size for my ornaments that I've got. And again, when I'm finished, I'll do a little art project and fill this with paint, swirl it around till it's solid and then set it upside down on like an egg carton for it to dry. All right, so this is where we're at. Um, one thing I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do, whoops, untangle my needle, is I'm going to see where I'm coming out of, and just for consistency, I'm going to sew through one bead on my ring. And the sewing into the ring, I would say, is probably the trickiest part of this whole thing, depending on how tightly you tied your knots. 
and working past the knot is a little challenging because the knot likes to get in the way. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm wrong. The next thing I'm going to do is going to be to hide my tail. I learned this trick, which is pretty slick. So if I can get my needle in there, mm -hmm, I am going to sew through a few beads. The idea is if I sew through a few beads, I can pull on my thread and snake that knot through so the tail is hidden in these beads that I'm sewing through. So I'm going to pull the yarn, the thread all the way through until my knot comes here and then my tail will be running in and I can just snip it off. So depending on the thickness of your thread, this works better or worse. Um, it's also possible, like you kind of see I even did it already, which is sort of surprising. There we go. Knots happen, so if you, if you go slow and you're gentle with it, it usually resolves itself okay. But sometimes, like that, it just likes to get all spun up on itself. I'm probably having this experience because I'm using really cheap thread. So a lot of <laughs> what I've found with beading is it's mostly thread management and threading the needle and tying knots. Go figure. All right, so I am holding my work and I'm pulling hard with my thread. And I don't know if you can see that, but it pulled my tail in quite a bit. So the knot has moved, and I th I'm guessing it's right around here. So the knot, the, the tail is, has snaked its way in. So at this point, I'm going to feel confident that I can just trim this, the tail off and not have to sew it in. The other option would have been to take another needle, thread the tail, and sew through in the other direction. but. I do it in two steps when you can kind of cheat it in one. All right, so I've got my thread coming out of a bead and now we begin. The first count we're going to do is we are going to sew on 23, 23 beads. I'm checking my math. Okay, 23 beads. One, two, three, four, All right, I think I grabbed a couple there, so I just want to double count. Five, 10, 15. Let's get to 23. I'm at 21 now, 22, 23. All right, so I've got 23 beads, and I'm going to just pull them all the way down, straightening out my thread as I go. All right. 23 beads. So the first few times we do this, it's going to be a little bit fiddly. And I tried finding another way to build it, but this really is the way it has to be made, unfortunately. Trust me on that. I've attempted this 30 times and finally figured it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold our work and you're going to sew, you're going to skip three beads, one, two, three, and sew through bead number four. You're not picking up any new ones. You've got them all there. And when you sew through, it's really important, especially if you're working with thread, that you try not to sew through the thread. You don't want to pierce the thread with your needle. Um, it just makes it harder to undo if you have split your thread. So I'm going to park my needle, and I'm just holding on to that bead, that number four bead, and I'm pulling my thread through gently. And if I see knots coming, I can kind of just pull on the stuff that hasn't gone through yet to straighten it out. And I usually, I don't know, the nylon thread doesn't tangle or not nearly as quickly as the cotton thread does. So, all right, so I've got a lot of gapping in my thread. So what I want to do is I want to kind of hold on to that. I'll lay this down, see if it's easier to see down here. I want to hold on to that size four, that number four bead and just tighten up to try and get any of the slack out. So what we've made is called a pico. It's a little grouping of three beads at the very end. Um, and if I pull out my model here, you'll see that's what these little bloops are. So we've just made one of those, and now we begin the netting part. So the netting is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna give you the number of beads to count. You'll add them, you'll 
skip the same number and go through. So we're going to be kind of working our way up and then back through the ring and back down and add another pico. Work your way up through the ring and back down and add another pico. All right. So on our way up, we are going to add seven beads to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads. So I have seven beads on my thread and I'm going to pick up my work and I'm going to now skip seven beads to start. So I'm coming out of this fourth bead. So we're going to reset our counter and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and go through this bead number eight. Okay. Let's see if that helps. Skip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and go through bead number eight eight and only number eight. Again, making sure that you don't pierce your thread. So I hold my work, I park my needle, and I gently work my thread through. You'll notice that after I added those seven beads onto my thread, I didn't push them all the way down. I didn't go through the effort of pulling it through because I was going to get here. You'll also notice that as I did that, my thread got loose. So when you get back up to the top, you can tighten it, but also if you gently hold it kind of where the number four bead was, where you did your pico, um, that's usually enough to give you a handle to tighten it. But I, I, whenever you change directions, it's a good chance to snug up all of your work. So as you're working your way up, don't worry about it too much on your way back down or as before you start your way back down. Okay. Ugh. I promise we'll get into the rhythm of this. So I'm just double checking to make sure I've got the same number of beads on both sides. They look a little off, but I think it's just slight inconsistencies in the side of the bead and the tension, but that's okay. Um, one other note, the reason why I use Tohos or the Japanese made beads is because the sizing on the beads is so much more consistent than any beads made in China from the dollar store or whatever, the, the really cheap beads. Unfortunately, you'll spend more of your time picking through to find consistently sized beads than you will actually beading. And for me, it's not worth my time. I'd rather just splurge a little more, pay an extra couple bucks. All right. So now we've done seven. We're going to do six. We're going to add six beads and skip through six beads. Let me pick up six. Okay. So I've got six beads on my needle. Skip one, two, three, four, five, six, and go through bead number seven. I feel like I've caught the thread there. So I just pulled my needle out and I'm pushing it back in. What? All right. Park my needle, pull my thread through. My tail's getting just a little long, so I need to adjust that in the next pass. All right. And again, gently kind of tug to tighten everything up. So we've done seven, we've done six, and now the last one, you can even count how many are left before you get to the top, and that's your number. It's going to be four. So we're going to pick up four beads. One, two, three, four. Oop, too many. Four. And this is kind of the only real tricky part, is we're coming out of this bead here. But when we come back around, we're going to be the thread is going to come, we're kind of past the bead. So each time you connect with the top, you're going to hug a bead. So we're actually hugging this bead. So we're going to skip this one and we're going to go through this bead. So from where your thread is, skip the bead right next to it and go through the one after that. So again, let me, you can see where my thread is. I'm going to skip that bead and go through the one right after it. I think I might have changed directions because I think I hit my knot there. At one point you do have to go through the knot and it's just sort of a pain in the butt. All right, that's okay. So just through the one. Okay, so you can see it there where the thread is coming out and which bead I'm going through. So I've added four. I'm skipping a bead in the top ring and I'm pulling through. And at this point, you're going to change directions and work your way back down. So before I do that, 
I want to make sure that everything is snug enough. It's okay if there's a little bit of thread showing, it gives it a nice drape, um, but I just want to make sure that I don't have major gaps in this. So take your time, tighten everything up if needed, and then we keep going. All right, so we've come out of that bead and we're gonna actually sew through the first two beads on our thread. So before we split off to make our first diamond, we're gonna sew through two beads here. One, two. And depending on your starting count, if you need to make adjustments, this is one of the places that you'll have to make adjustments both to the number of beads you start with and how many you sew through. So on a smaller, tighter top, you might need three beads at the top instead of the starter two. And if it gets bigger, you might only need one or even zero if it's an extra large size. All right, so I've sewn through two beads. So now our pattern going down is we're gonna pick up five beads and go through bead number six. Pick up one, two, three, four, five. So I have five beads on my needle. I'm skipping five beads. One, two, this middle X joining one is three, four, five, and I'm gonna go through, oh, they all fell off. <laughs> Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, okay. Five, needs, five beads on my needle. I'm gonna slide them onto my thread so I don't drop them. I'm gonna count one, two, this middle X is three, four, five, and we're gonna go through bead number six, which is this one here. All right. And already you should start to see the diamonds are coming. They're coming, you'll notice them in a few more. All right, so we've added five, and now the next set we're gonna add is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're gonna go through this bead that's already kind of sticking out right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and go through this bead here. It's the middle bead on the bottom diamond. Okay, and now we're ready to get our Pico going. So we're gonna pick up another seven and we're gonna sew through the fourth one that we've picked up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven beads. And this time I do need to slide them all the way down because we're making our Pico. A little bit of a knot there. I think I've got an actual knot in my thread, but I'm sort of ignoring it. All right, so I've got my thread, my beads all snugged up. I'm gonna skip three and go back through bead number four, the middle bead that I just picked up. I'm just going to hold the beads in place while I pull my thread through. And again, as we've turned directions, we're going back up now, it's a good time to kind of make sure that everything is snug. If you notice farther back there were gaps, you can still tighten from the top and then tighten again from the bottom. And that's it. All right, so now we're going back up. So now we're going to pick up seven to start. seven beads and at this point you can still count the beads to get up there but I know that it's going to go through this middle bead here on my diamond so I skipped from where my thread is coming out one to three the X makes four five six seven and going through bead number eight
I'm just messing with my tension a little bit, getting a little snug. All right. And now we're going to do six. Pick up six. Five, six. I've got six on my beads, on my needle. We're going to skip six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're actually going through the middle on this diamond as well. You can see that. Okay, and our last step is going to be to pick up four. One, two, three, four, and this time we're going to skip the next bead and go through this bead. So the, from where our last thread is coming out, we're skipping a bead and going through the next bead on the ring. So that's that. All right. And it's basically repeating the same thing until you get back around to where you started. So I'm going to show you a few more repeats and then I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. So let's pick up. Actually, before we pick up any, we need to sew through the first two. Sewing through two beads, trying not to catch my thread and making sure that the tension is good everywhere. So I want to make sure that there's no weird gaps, that these, that the extra there nice and snug along the bottom. So I'm just tugging. Okay. All right, on our way back down, our count is five, seven, seven, and on our way back up, it's seven, six, four. Five, seven, 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 six, four. So we're gonna do five. One, two, three, four, five beats on my needle. I'm going to skip five. One, two, three, four, five. So on your way back down, you aren't really hitting the middle because it's an even number. You're hitting just above middle, which is there's two on the top and three below you. So all right. And then we're going to pick up seven. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven beads on my needle, and this time it is the middle bead on that diamond. We just have one little awkward diamond in there where it's two on the top and three on the bottom. It's not really awkward, it's just, it fits. When you start to lay it out, it works. All right, and then we're going to pick up seven, and this time we're going to slide all of our beads up and make our pico. I think that's how you pronounce it. All right, so I've got seven beads on my needle. Skip three and go through the fourth bead. Okay. It's worth your time to take your time and count as you go to make sure that you have the right number of beads. If you make a mistake, you'll probably just need to take off your needle and un, you know, pull it all out and keep rethread your needle. But since I really have a hard time threading needles, <laughs> I try to take my time on this so I don't have to um yeah, do that too much. So, I'm picking up 7 on my way back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to skip seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and go through this middle bead on this diamond, number eight. All right. And we're going to pick up six, three, four. I have six beads. 
skip six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and go through this middle of the diamond. Right. Again, I can kind of see a little more thread than I like. So before I go much farther, I'm pulling my pico down to sort of snug up the thread before and then pulling my working thread. And that does bring things nice and tight. All right, and now I'm going to pick up four more. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to skip this next bead here. And I'm going to go through this bead. So I'm hugging this one, skip a bead, and go through the next one. The nice thing at this point is no matter where you are, you can actually look ahead to where what was before to get a sense of where I need to go next. So I'm looking here, what do I need to do next? I need I see I can need to go back through. Oh, let me make sure I'm in the shot. Um, I can look at the work that I've done before to see how I go. So I'm gonna go back through two beads and make sure that I don't have any weird loose tension. And from here, I'm making this line. So I'm gonna need to put on five, skip five, and go through the sixth bead. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna go through this bead just above the middle. I'm gonna pick up seven now. And go through the middle of the next diamond. And then I'm gonna pick seven and make my next pico. All right, so let's make our pico. Pull my beads all the way up. Skip three and go through bead number four. Make sure everything's snug. And then I'm gonna take my chime going back up. Again, it's seven, six, four, and on your way back down, it's five, seven, 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 six, four, five, seven, seven. So once you have that flow going, you're gonna just work your way all the way around until you get back to the beginning, and we're gonna, um, I'll show you how to connect the two to where you're working to where you started. Um, one other thing that I'm, about, I'm gonna show you next, um, so go ahead and pause here until you're ready for the next part, which is what happens if you run out of thread. So I'm gonna show you how to end off your thread when, so stop before you are completely out, give yourself some working room. Um, but when your thread feels just too short, um, I'm gonna show you how to tie that off and then I'll show you how to finish this up. Okay, so here I am. I've only got a few more left to do. And the funny thing is, is I actually managed to put enough thread on my needle. <laughs> um, that I don't actually need to change my thread. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I had a sample that I played around with and the, t the counting wasn't quite right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just demonstrate in case you need to know how to finish this off. Or if you run out of thread, what do you, what do, you do? So I'm gonna, for you guys, I'm going to unthread my one thread and all right, so quick tip on threading a needle, shove the thread between your fingers and then shove the needle onto the thread. It's just a little bit more successful doing it that way than um, trying to push the thread through the needle. And if it doesn't work the first time, because mine's split, because I'm not using Fireline um, or a monofilament, I'm going to try again, trim it off, fresh end, 
and shove it on and that worked yay so anyway if you really hate threading needles or you're having challenge with that it might be a plug for fireline all right so this is a mock-up slightly different there's only one bead at the top and i found that the rate of increase wasn't enough um it it just didn't spread quite right it kind of flattened out here and didn't when you put it on the ball it bump, bunches up a little bit um the one space i think if your ring starting ring is a little bit bigger this is the pattern you'll use you'll only have one bead at the top but anyway so here i've come up and back down through the beads and now I need to tie off. And so you have a couple of choices. You can tie off at the ring and then sew through, but because you're gonna continue to work through, I find that that's a little bit trickier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew down just to an intersection. So I'm gonna go through kind of the cross bead there to an intersection and pull. And I'm gonna make sure that everything's nice and snug because how I do this includes knots which people some people are just anti-knot but i like the security of a knot so um, make sure everything's nice and snug and i'm going to go under the thread there and then sew through my loop to make just a simple i think it's called a half hitch knot and i've got a bubble there which is <laughs> a terrible example here I got a knot where it's not supposed to be knotted yet. There we go, okay. All right, so I pull that nice and tight, and then I'm gonna sew through to my next intersection and tug just a little, and you feel it click, actually, and that hides the knot. So I've buried the knot in the bead. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Ooh, don't pull the needle off. Pull through my half hitch through the loop. And sometimes when you start to pull, it looks like it's gonna go in the wrong place. So as long as you go nice and slow, it gives you a chance to make sure that the knot is going where you want it to go. And then at this point, I've done a second half hitch knot. I'm probably good enough, but I'm gonna just sew through a few more rounds of beads here. Um, again, tug to pull that knot through a little bit. I'm just going to keep kind of going in this line. Changing direction helps kind of anchor the thread. Um, but the challenge is changing the direction generally is only going to happen at the top or the bottom. Because um, if I were to sew across to this one, you'd see a little bit of that potentially. And if once I'm down in here, I can't come back up. So the intersections aren't a good place to change direction. It kind of is, you could do a little zigzagging along the threads that you're in. You can cross over and then back down. <clears throat> but once you've done your couple of knots and sewn through a little bit, you can cut your thread off. If you wanted to be extra sure, you could do a surgeon's knot, that double knot. Um, but that's how you're going to end off the thread and i'm going to show that again at the end of the video so let's pretend that this is my new thread and i wanted to tie on to keep working because that's you know you finish one you got to start another one so we'll just use the same thread so i don't have to um tie a knot again i mean uh, thread my needle so i'm going to go ahead and again kind of picking an intersection so i kind of sewed along this for the original one so i'm going to come over this way a little bit and work my way honestly i'm going to tie a knot and i'm probably just going to go up and in through this upper ring to come back out where we left off before. So I'll give myself a little room to work. So I'm going to just pick this one here. And you go down to where your tail end is. And unlike the starting one, I don't usually tie my knot and then pull it through to secure the tail. At this point, I'll usually leave a big enough tail that I can put a needle on it and sew it back through the piece. So again, this is kind of why when I get started, I pull out several um, arm lengths. So like I, I, pull, I take the thread and I stretch both arms kind of as far as they go and I do it a second time. So that's how much thread, so how much is that five, 10 feet? Um, I'm kind of working with when I first start a project like this. So, oops, I only did one. Since I'm only gonna tie one knot here, 
I'm going to go ahead and do my surgeon's knot. So let me flip that through one more time. All right. And the surgeon's knot, unfortunately, is just a little bit bulky. So although it's very secure, it does take up more space. So when you're sewing through, you might have to tug a little harder to get it through. So I'm going to just sew back through a couple of these beads. And tug to bury that knot a little bit in there. And then from here, since that knot's really secure because I did the surgeon's knot to start, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew through. Just keep, go from here. Sew through until I'm at where I left off. And by following the thread paths that are already there, I'm not usually introducing any new lines. So in this pattern, again, it's not the one we're gonna follow, but I'll just come down through the one bead. Oh gosh, it's supposed to be going to bed. It's late over here. Anyway, go through the one bead, and then I can continue on my way. Um, and then I would, again, I would take um, a needle and hook it on this thing and wiggle it back and forth and snip off the end. So that's how you add thread to your work. So now, if you've needed to do that, great. If you didn't, I hope that was a fun tutorial for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead back to my original piece and finish this baby off so I can go to bed and you can enjoy your finished awesome ornament. Um, all right, so I've threaded my needle. Let's finish this baby up. So from here, Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. I have one, two, two kind of, I, sorry. All right. So from here where I'm at, I'm at the bottom of this one. When I come back up, I'm going to be doing one, two, and then I'm going to come back and connect it here. So we're going to, we're at the bottom. We're going to move my beads over because I'm kind of losing where I'm supposed to be working here. All right, I'm going to pick up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, come to the middle of this bump. And because I just did my pico, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up a little bit. Now I'm going to do six. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six, and actually one thing that I will say, and here you can kind of see it, um, some of the beads are just like this first one over here was a little bit skinny, and it actually ended up in the position that I was going to be sewing back through. So I tend to not want to put the skinniest ones where I know it's going to be an intersection. It's just sort of a, a thing that I personally try to be mindful of, but honestly I think I could be overthinking it because that's my... That's my tendency. So anyway, all right. So through the middle bump there. All right, we got to do four. One, two, three, four. Got four beads going. Go to the next bead. Skip one and go through and back down two. Hopefully by this point you really have the feel of it. I'm kind of zooming through the repeats because I'm on the home stretch and I'm excited to get this thing finished. This has been quite the undertaking. All right, coming back down, we're going to do five. And again, for whatever reason, I happen to pick up a skinny middle bead, which I'm not a huge fan of. One, two, three, four, five, six. So because I, I tend to look for the middle bump, and because this is six, I'm going to go just above middle. Keep the small side to the top. And before I go much farther, I'm going to pull here and then pull down to kind of gather up any slack. All right, I did five, let me do seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads. Go through the middle bump, one, two, three. This one's tucked in, so I'll use my thumb to push it out. There you go. And just a full disclosure, which I think is funny as I do my next grouping of seven. <laughs> Um, I got to a stopping point with this and started thinking that I did my pattern wrong. And that's where I made this other sample um, with the slight adjustment, but realized that this one that I'm making really is. Seriously, I've done this thing 30 different ways. I think
think this is the one I like, I hope, but I'm not making money off of this. This is what I have figured out to work for me. I hope it works for you. One, two, three, going back up, we're gonna pick up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you are a bead designer or you like playing around with math, you are welcome to do your own trials and experiments. Let me pick up six and determine if adding a bead at any given point changes the rate of increase enough to wrap this net that expands around a flat net around a spherical surface. <laughs> and then we can talk. It has been quite some time that I've been working on this in my brain, in my time, playing with beads. I joke about it being my thesis project I never signed up for. I don't get a doctorate or anything fancy at the end of this. I just get a pretty cool ornament and hopefully an interesting enough video. All right, I did my four. And I'm gonna come back down through the top two. So we're gonna come down, bloop, bloop, make our pico, and on the way back up, we're gonna be going across, 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 and back up through these two and then to this bead entrance here. So we're gonna go down like normal and then we're gonna get into the details. So I'm, I've sewn through the first two, I've fixed my tension, I'm gonna pick up five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, one, two, three, go through bead number three of this loop, bloop. And again, I've got some loose threads going, so I'm gonna go ahead and snug everything up home stretch here. All right, let me pick up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I got my seven beads. And I'm gonna go through the middle bead on this bump. And I'm gonna pick up seven more beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One other comment I'll make about the Pico, I try to make the beads that I'm, the bottom three beads roughly the same size to each other. Um, if they're different sizes, it just doesn't lay as nicely. They can be different to each other, but within the grouping of three, try to get them roughly the same size. So not a chance to explore big uncable beads. Okay, so. Here's where we are. We're at the bottom of a pico. I'm trying to snug everything up. And what's left is to zip these two sides together. So aside from the very first row, everything else has had the same pattern. And here, what we're doing is we're kind of splitting the difference and we're not counting the middle intersections because we're gonna be borrowing it from each other. So the first thing we're gonna do if we don't count the intersection here is there's three beads to get to the intersection. So I'm gonna do three beads and then go through this one here, number four on this side. So let me pick up one, two, three, one, two, pick some good ones. Okay, three beads on my needle and I'm gonna skip three beads on the other side. One, two, three, and go through this bead number four from our starting round. All right, you see that? It's very easy to lose your way, so take your time with this. All right, so the next section, I can even use this as a guide as there's three more to the next intersection. So let me pick up three more. One, two, three, three beads here. And on this side now, one, two, three, this one that's actually nicely sticking out, that's the one I'm gonna go through. It's the middle on this side. Okay, so now I can see from where I'm at, it's three beads to the next intersection. So let me pick up three beads. One, two, three. Okay. And over here, from the last intersection I was on, sorry, I rotate this while I work. I'm gonna skip one, two, three, and go through this bead that's sticking out. All right, from here, 
you guessed it, we got two beads to the next intersection. So we're going to do two beads and go through this bead over here, which is in the middle of bump. Pick up one, two, two beads and go through. Skipping two, I'm going to go through that. All right, you're seeing it come together. All right, that's the last step. There's two beads to the next intersection, so let me go ahead and pick up two beads. And this time, I'm only gonna go through these two beads at the top here. So it's an intersection of two. And then we're gonna talk about where to go from here and then how to finish off. All right, so we've zipped this thing up. We're not adding any more beads, that was it. So what I want to do is you'll notice that every time we've got one of these stacks of two, the thread comes out on either side of the bead. So where we're at here, the thread's coming out in this direction, but I want it to come through over here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew through to get into my ring right here. Where would it be? Right in here. And again, you might bump into the knot when you're working on this. So it's very likely that you're going to get to a sticking point. I can feel the knot that I'm pushing past right now. So I'm just going to go through two beads to start. Um, if you have a hard time with the knot, you might need to grab some little pliers to kind of pull your needle through. But again, we got strong um, thread we're working with. So that's it. Um, what we're going to do is tie it off, but just because it's been, it's been such a process. I'm going to demonstrate how this sits on top of the ornament. So you can see how pretty that is. It just sits really nicely and hugs all the way around. So it'll fit the glass ornament that I had over the silver. It'll fit this one without the silver on it. So I'll put the silver cap. Um, and I like how we've done kind of a small it starts with smaller diamonds into the bigger ones as it spreads, but yeah. So the shape is good. I'm happy with this. It's a good solid with this pattern. So anyway, all right. So now that I've double checked that it does sit on my ornament well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna tie my knot cause I've already got knots in this, in this general location. So I'm gonna just sew through a few more beads here. Sometimes I lose track of which direction I'm going through. All right, so sewing through. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead. You have a choice. Again, you can, um, if you want to reinforce this, sew all the way around and you just keep going that way. You can tie your knot kind of anywhere. Um, or you can, just like we added and uh, changed our thread, you can kind of do it within your work. So whatever works for you, I'm going to go ahead and just sneak a knot in here. And again, I'm going to pull that knot to hide within my bead. So doing a half hitch. So I've pulled through to make a loop, tangled everything up Hold on. nice and slowly. Make sure the knot ends up where you want it to go. Pull really tight once it's where it goes. And then I'm going to keep going through. I'm going to just, I might go mostly around. I'm going to go through another chunk of beads. I'll tie another half hitch knot. Sew through another chunk of beads and call it a day. All right, so there I'm going through, I don't know, eight or nine beads. And I'm going to tug to get that knot that you can kind of see there to disappear. All right, so there it's hiding. I'm going to tie one more knot here, just going through my work, going through the loop, pulling really gently, making sure that it's exactly where I want it to go. And then once the knot's where it's supposed to go, you can pull quite a bit harder. All right, I'm going to sew through a few more beads. And you'll see even as I've sewn through those, they just lay a little neater. These are kind of zigzagging, so I'm hoping that as I sew through these, it'll straighten them out a little bit. At this point, once it's on the ornament, though, you won't really, you won't notice. The zigzaggy stretches out. 
And at this point, I've tied a couple of knots. I can feel pretty good about it. If you want to be extra careful, tie a few more, go around the whole thing, but I'm going to call it a day with this. I got my snips, get nice and close. And that's it. Voila. And that's that's the ornament so just one reference if you are working with the black ornaments on Amazon just to show it's a sm slightly smaller ornament um, it still sits okay on it um, it hangs down a little lower so if you like the collar effect where it's just only covering a little bit of the ornament you're gonna want to get a slightly larger ornament than this but you'll also notice that there's a lot of wiggle room at the top so what you can do before tying off and ending everything, if you've got some extra wiggle room, um, you can sew across, kind of making your own loops going around, um, and then kind of sew from the middle of those to get, so you can kind of bridge it with more beads. Um, yeah, or you can glue it and secure it with like a clear super glue or something. And, and then it should stay put and not be all floppy. Or you can just hang it and fix it and then just not bump it again. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the Ruth Bader Ginsburg inspired descent collar ornament that I've made. And um, I can't wait to see your work. Happy trails. So I need to fill my ornament with black paint and swirl it around so that I can have a black ornament that fits the nice topper that I just made. So here's what I got. I've got some super cheap black acrylic paint and my glass ornament. I think it'll also work on plastic. Um, I've got my clear workspace and I've got um, a old jar that I'm gonna just tip it over to drip out the excess inside. So it needs to just be a little smaller than the ornament so it doesn't fall in. Um, if you have egg cartons, that works too. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this top off like that. And I have not honestly tried it with acrylic paint. <laughs> so we're in this one together. <laughs> um, I've done it with um, nail polish, which worked great, to be honest. Some of them were thicker and older. Um, it's a great way to use up your old nail polish. And I've got a separate video for that. Same concept, brand new paint. So um, I have tubes of acrylic paint that I think are pretty gloopy. I don't think they'll spread very well, so we're going to go with this. Okay, so we got our black paint, and here we go. So I'm going to very carefully squeeze in a fair amount and rotate it. You can already see it turning black. You also can horribly see all of my fingerprints. So when this is done, I'll be sure to make sure to clean this off. Um, and at this point, the bottom is coated. And so I have to take my time and you can kind of see the paint sliding around in there. And the idea is to cover every clear surface with the black paint. And again, this is really cheap. Now, old nail polish, I think some of them spread already better than this. Um, you, if you don't want to use too much paint, you just need more patience. But for this, for the purpose of this video, I'm kind of going overboard. Um, I don't know if you can see how it's kind of oozing down. This reminds me of that movie Fern Gully with the oil, the sludge dude. I can tell there's a lot of paint in there. You can sort of see it <clears throat> slowly moving. So it just takes time for it to get around the sides. Here, if I hold it here, you can see it. Again, I really apologize. I tried to clean the ornament, but apparently I have greasy hands tonight. Greasy hands and sniffles. Apologies for my sniffles the whole video. Allergies have been killer recently. So I want to get that little bloop that's left there. You can see it's getting smaller slowly. And Hopefully you're not recording a video while you're doing it, because if I lose track, I have done this already once before where I've dripped the paint or nail polish out. Okay, so that one spot's finally covered now. So I'm going to rotate to get this side down. That's it. So once you have all of the spots covered, 
And again, take your time to do this right. Make sure you get, like I can see there's a gap there. And even holding it upright, I see that it's closing and there's a lot of opening. Um, so take your time getting every part of the clear ornament covered. And then once you're happy with it and you think you've got everything evenly covered, at least as far as the surface goes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip the whole ornament upside down and leave it to dry at least overnight. It depends on the temperature. With the nail polish, it took a couple of days, I found, before it was completely set. I don't think the acrylic's gonna take quite as long, but it could also be depending on how much paint sticks inside. I also highly suggest wiping up any sort of drip marks that might come out the front. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see, there's still some gapping here and all around this side, so I'm gonna hold it with the big gap at the bottom there. So at this point, because we're getting a little close for comfort, I am gonna, okay, here's the open hole. I'm gonna put that towards the bottom and wait. And I'd rather just do it over the container to catch the excess. You can see the little gap's all that's left. All right, I'm gonna rest it like that. So I don't even have to hold it. And while I do that, I'm gonna find the topper that I just made so you can see what the finished product's gonna look like. We're gonna ignore that there's still a gap there, but very carefully to make sure I don't get any paint on this. There you go. So we've got that, and if I sneak this one in, which again, because it's still wet, I'll have to clean off the silver part, but there's the finished ornament filled with paint it needs to dry still, <clears throat> but I think that looks pretty cool, and honestly, I think it'll be a nice touch on my Christmas tree to honor um, an incredible woman who did so much for women's rights, so so respected and such a great loss this year. I know 2020 has been a beast, but we might as well spend the time honoring the people that will be sorely missed. All right, so let me pop this off. There's definitely paint on that. <laughs> let me take this off carefully. Everything's covered. Solid black, it really does need to be cleaned. <laughs> so, and I'm going to point it straight down into my jar, and you'll be probably surprised how much is going to start dripping out after a while. But that's it. I'm going to leave this for a few days, and um, my ornament will be done. So I can't wait to see yours. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and um, I hope that you have an excellent holiday season.